We'll begin in Abia State, where a federal high court sitting in Umaya has declared as unconstitutional the provision of the amended Electoral Act for political office holders seeking to stand election to resign three months before elections. The court also directs Attorney General of the Federation to delete Section 84, Subsection 12 of the amended Electoral Act. Tivasi's principal reports. Last month, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law the long-awaited amended electoral act. The president raised serious concern on section 84 subsection 12, which he said is in variance with some of the provisions in the 1999 constitution as amended. President Buhari went ahead to write both chambers of the National Assembly, seeking amendment of the section, but the Senate rejected the president's requests. Worried by this development, a legal practitioner indicated that they headed to court for nullification of that section, which the court agreed with him. Reacting to the judgment, counsel to the plaintiff, Emeka Ozan, stated that the National Assembly is not required to further make any amendments to the section. It's inconsistent with the rights of Nigerian citizens when read with section 66 of the Constitution, 107, 137, 182 and now nullified section 84 subsection 12 of the electoral act and as equally has ordered the attorney general to, of the federation to delete section 84 subsection 12 of the electoral act forthwith now the implication of this is that it has provided a congenial atmosphere for politicking and political space for 2023 council to the attorney general of the federation chris level also agreed with the judgment. Originally, we honestly believed that it was inadvertence on the part of the National Assembly. It was a big error. And being gentlemen and um, distinguished senators and the members of the House, I think they will now go back and do the right thing. Since the court has made pronouncement on it, and that uh, put to rest every other issue with regards to that, so that we can move on with uh, the national uh, issues that are besieging us as a country and as a nation. The presiding judge, Evelyn Anyadike, holds that the Constitution has already stipulated that appointees of government seeking to contest elections were only to resign at least 30 days to the date of the election, and that any other law that mandated such appointees to resign or leave office at any time before that is unconstitutional, invalid, illegal, null and void. Prince Oba, TVC News, Umwaiya. We'll bring you details of that story subsequently. In other news now, members of the Youth Parliament in Ondo State have urged the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, to review their ongoing strike in the interest of the country's education system. The young people also challenged the federal government to meet the demands of the striking lecturers in the interest of the students. They made this appeal at their sitting in Akure. Ayodhya Jimradia reports. The strike embarked upon by members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has paralyzed activities in universities across Nigeria. The lecturers, among other demands, want better funding of the education sector. This issue and many others came up for discussion at the sitting of the Ndo State Youth Parliament in Akure, the state capital. The youth want both parties in the industrial dispute to shift ground in the interest of the students. The Speaker of the Parliament, Smith Ikumakpa, you said the strike has crippled academic activities in the universities. Asu and the federal government that they should come together, should sit down and have a roundtable discussion on how to find a lasting solution to the demands of Asu. They should look into the demands and Asu should also please compromise too. They might not get all what they want for this, for the interest of the average student at home that is at the receiving end of this their action. Starting to look like um, a prevalent thing in Nigeria surrounding our educational system where the government have to force lecturers, teachers to go on strike affecting the education of the students is really quite unfortunate and we can only still continue to 
plead and look up to the government to find a way around. The young parliamentarians also urge youths to take charge of the political space. They agree that more youths are venturing into politics, which they say should be given more push. The monetization of election is the demonization of the youth. It forces the youth to the corner and ensures that they look for every means possible, especially those interested in the art of governance or leadership. A workable policy that will be able to elevate you know, the standard of living of young people in this community. And I think that um, demography, young people, is a very critical segment of our society that we cannot afford. Parliamentarians also agree that aggressive participation in voter registration is of paramount importance for the young ones to take charge politically. IODG Moradi or TVC News, Akure. The governor of Delta State, Ifan Yokoa, says he is committed to handing over a vibrant state to his successor and wants his team to stay focused on the 14 months left in his administration. Governor Okoa spoke at the two day retreat for top government functionaries in Asaba. Ikinamichi reports. <laughs> It is a two-day retreat for commissioners, permanent secretaries, auditors, and other top government functionaries. The significance of the program is mirrored in the theme focusing the administration to finish strong. Everything that needs to be done to make sure that the contract with Deltans is kept is exactly what we have come here to sit down to discuss in two days. Different resource persons took their turn to emphasize on the need for the team to remain on course as the Governor Okoa led administration is gradually coming to an end. So, all I'm encouraging is that we must on our own decide and say, how do we mobilize and lead? I know that we are leading through mission, through vision, through values, and through character to achieve what we are supposed to achieve. There is no business that is more important than politics. It is through this politics that political leadership emerges. I'm hoping, like you and many people in this room, that the outcome of the 2023 elections would provide Nigeria opportunity for renaissance, that would emerge the right quality of leadership. Governor Ifan Yokoa is one of the participants here. He commends his team for all the achievement recorded in the past years but wants more commitment at this final stage of the administration. You must understand that as long as you're in government, you remain focused on achieving the goal to the end and in, in trying to ensure the success of the administration that you work in. That must be your priority. Like the Ministry of Education, Higher Education, we've established three universities. What is the pathway of giving strength to those universities that they become truly sustainable even when we leave? Everyone that has headed the office that has uh, uh, worked in the area of job creation and generation of entrepreneurs, they have really done so well. And that's why I've also analyzed and looked at things and I just find that, please, commissioners, I want to plead with you, stay focused. The importance of this retreat is for the governor to refocus his team towards ensuring that the momentum all projects and programs we started is maintained to the end of his administration. Ikenna Ameichi, TVC News, Asaba. The Lagos State Government has published the Social Protection Policy Handbook that focuses on poverty, literacy, inequality, amongst others. This is following the approval of the State Social Protection Policy by the State Executive Council in August 2020. Idolu Akukwola reports. Nigeria's poverty rate stands at 40.1%, while the country's unemployment rate at 33.3%. Also, over 76 million Nigerian adults are illiterate. With the increasing population in Nigeria, these figures are expected to double. But the Lagos State Government has adopted the social protection policy through the federal government to assist in addressing the core social and economic issues. The policy aims to create an all-inclusive and comprehensive method of addressing social economic vulnerabilities to poverty and deprivation at all levels 
in our society. In partnership with the United Nations International Children Emergency Fund, the policies contained in this handbook aims at promoting inclusive growth, equality, security, as well as ensuring a life of dignity for residents of Lagos. The Lagos State, in addition to what it's currently doing, is going to provide free school meals to pupils in public primary school. There's a provision for all children and adults living with disabilities. A fully developed and well-generated single social register will afford uh, that man on the street, that man in the corner of his own community, way out there in Ibejuleki or in Badagri, will also be able to have access to government intervention. Social protection is seen as a fundamental human right which every individual should obtain. If all the provisions of this program are implemented, there are chances of shaping all the social vices into positive things in the country. With the hashtag Ambition 2030 of the 2015 Sustainable Development Goals, this intervention from the state government will allow a steady progress in ensuring the rights of all citizens are well secured and protected. In Niolua, Bukwala, TVC News, Lagos. And now to politics. Some northern youths have predicted that the All Progressives Congress will emerge stronger from its current leadership crisis. The spoken Portakot, while reacting to the controversies trailing the build up to the national convention scheduled for the 26th of March, senior reporter Ucho Okoro has more. The jostle for leadership positions in the All Progressives Congress at the national level has become a source of concern for some party faithful. Particularly, the dispute over the office of the national chairman is again raising concerns that the APC may be weakening its chances at the polls in 2023. Many Nigerians are also waiting to see the impacts that President Muhammad Buhari's intervention would have on the situation. But for the South, South and Southeast Arua Youth Group, there is no cause for alarm. The successful conduct of the APC National Convention would restore normalcy to the party. And the issue of this crisis lingering till 2023, I don't see it lingering till 2023. The crisis will naturally die immediately after the convention. The heat of the crisis and everything is due to this convention. Every block is trying to bring out, to make sure they bring out the national chairman from their own block. But we strongly believe by 26 to 27 of this month after the convention, this internal crisis will die naturally. These youths of northern extraction are optimistic that Senator Umar Tanko Al-Makura would emerge as the new national chairman of the All Progressives Congress. The group talked about the former governor's experience and credibility two qualities that they insist are necessary for leading the APC. The history of the party, they say, supports their position. Among the three major political parties that form the APC, only the CPC are yet to produce a national chairman. We strongly believe now is the time for a national chairman. We strongly believe now is the time for a national chairman from CPC. And the most suitable and formidable person is Senator Umar Tanko Al Makura. The South South and Southeast Arawa Youth Group also rejected the idea of a consensus candidate for the position of national chairman, saying only an open contest would produce the best. Uche Okoro, TVC News. The federal government has warned licensed lottery companies in the country to pay their outstanding liabilities or risk revocation of their licenses. The Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Senator George Akume, spoke at the official launch of the Back to School Jumpstart project in Lagos. Statistics put the number of deaths from the COVID-19 pandemic to more than 6 million. But statistics are scarce regarding how many children have dropped out of school due to the pandemic, especially in developing economies like Nigeria. Hence, the launch of the Jumpstart project in Lagos by the National Lottery Front in collaboration with the Office of the Speaker, House of Representatives. 
The project aims to digitize teaching and learning process as well as inculcate the culture of basic hygiene in schools across the country. The enable government to equip public schools with e-learning facilities that are to be launched in due course. To learn that over 40 junior and secondary schools in Surulere Federal Constituency will benefit from this intervention in the first phase of the program is heartwarming and commendable. Experts believe the program will help to improve capacity of schools in the area of good hygiene practice through provision of basic sanitary materials and start teaching and learning aids. Decision by the federal government to establish the National Lottery Trust Fund is indicative of a government that recognizes the importance of lottery and gaming as a vehicle for enhancing the social well-being of its citizenry through investments in its various lottery good cause intervention projects. I urge all licensees and permit holders to without further delay pay up their outstanding liabilities or risks revocation of their licenses and permits. For the Speaker, House of Representatives, represented at this occasion, government is committed to building a better and stronger education system which will be resistant to eventualities of the new normal. It's designed to mitigate the disadvantage caused by the lack of digital infrastructures in our public schools, as well as ensure that there are no breaks in teaching and learning in the event of future pandemics. The agency also inaugurated vital medical equipment donated to Bajarandul Hospital, Mother and Care General Hospital, to consolidate on other equipment earlier donated to Oniko Healthcare Center a few months ago. Adimola Lawrence, TVC News, Lagos. Now, each year, recyclables uh, save more than uh, 700 billion tons in global carbon emissions, and this is projected to increase to 1 billion tons by 2030. Attending this number has pushed environmental advocates out on the Global Recycling Day to urge for better ways of recycling in order to save much more lives and the environment. It is Global Recycling Day, a day set aside to encourage people to think again about what is thrown away. This year is shifting focus to celebrate the recycling fraternity, those who put themselves on the front line to collect waste and recycle them during the multiple lockdowns. To support improvement this school in the heart of the capital city is doing its own part to ensure that waste is used for the good of the students and not left to be harmful to the environment through the construction of this toilet. We need to keep the world clean and the environment clean so that um, we won't have um, we won't have like issues with the environment. I encourage and I also put waste bins in okay in every corner of my house so that it can be easier if you want to recycle anything rather than throwing it on the floor and also be hygienic. When you get this waste and you're able to segregate them properly you'll be able to know which one you can recycle and they will be of use. Even in the school here, that is what we do. Global Recycling Day was created to help recognize and celebrate the importance recycling plays in preserving the primary resources of the planet. Environmental advocates like Dorothy believe that recycling is one way to save the planet and secure its future. Most of the waste we generate in our offices, in our homes, in our schools are majorly recyclable waste. I'm talking of paper, I'm talking of plastic and metal. So what we do now, instead of evacuating this waste to the dump sites, we train, clean, uh, we train cleaners for free to segregate this waste using the color coded bin and when they segregate it we evacuate it to a recycling company free of charge the day strives to urge world leaders that recycling must be a global issue and encourage people to think resourcefully and not waste kemi balugun tvc news abuja